there. I'm Erica Becker Medina, Chief of the Decennial Communications Coordination Office, and I'm providing this update on where we are now as we continue to process the data from the 2020 Census. We wrapped up data collection last October after having mailed out invitations to respond to the Census in March and having been in the field knocking on doors since July. While that was not our originally planned schedule, 2020 required us to adapt our field operations to meet the unprecedented challenges that arose from the COVID-19 pandemic. Even under ideal circumstances, conducting a census is an enormous undertaking. It involves hundreds of thousands of people and dozens of operations and systems, all with the goal of counting everyone once, only once, and in the right place. The historic pandemic led to social distancing requirements, mask mandates, and stay-at-home orders that forced us to temporarily seize all in-person field operations to ensure the safety of our employees and the public. These delays compounded other challenges. For example, under normal census circumstances, we would have completed in-person field operations before hurricane season was in full swing. Instead, we hit our peak operations as the nation faced multiple devastating hurricanes. In addition to the hurricanes, we had devastating wildfires with dangerous air quality issues from the smoke. We adapted to provide additional opportunities for everyone to respond and extended data collection by two and a half months to allow more time for households to respond. We expanded outreach through more than 400,000 national and local partners and expanded the paid advertising campaign to engage more audiences and local media markets. We quickly launched updated ads and messaging to reflect new COVID-19 related realities. And we also supported many more languages than before, además de publicar todo en español. We deployed staff to places in low responding areas to answer questions and help people respond to the census. We also introduced follow-up phone calls instead of, or in addition to sending census takers door to door and adapted our telephone operations to ensure social distancing and call centers. We changed our procedures to minimize in-person contact with the public by leaving census invitations in mailboxes and also trained our census takers to exercise social distancing. We sent teams of skilled census takers from other parts of the country that were closer to being finished to work in areas that were lagging. Thankfully, through all of the challenges, the public could still respond online, by phone, and by mail. Two of every three households across the nation responded on their own with our final self-response rate of 67%, beating the 2010 rate of 66.5%. And of those households that responded on their own, four in five chose to do so online. And I'm happy to report, we did not experience a single minute of downtime or any cyber intrusions for our online response option. As a result of all the extraordinary efforts, we were able to account for over 99.9% of the more than 152 million addresses in the 2020 census. And while we are proud of the completion rate, we know that's only part of the story, and we've got more to do to assess the quality of the data. We're eager to see how well we counted the people within those addresses. And we're working to measure that now as we conduct the post-enumeration survey. If this were a typical decade, we would have already started delivering the first round of redistricting data from the 2020 census. Our original plan was to deliver the data in state groupings starting in February and finishing by March 31st, 2021. We are focusing first on our constitutional obligation to deliver the state population counts for apportionment to the president. The schedule for completing this work is now April 30th, 2021. It is important to know that while we had the goal of finishing by the statutory deadline of December 31st, 2020, the Census Bureau's most important objective, the objective that has driven our entire approach to the 2020 Census, is to deliver a complete and accurate Census. Processing a Census is complex work that takes time, computing power, and subject matter expertise. We began post-processing once data collection was complete. There are multiple required processing phases, and with each one, we're rigorously reviewing the resulting data files to ensure we count everyone accurately and in the correct geographic location. There are four processing phases in the lead up to the apportionment data delivery, and we've already completed the first two of these four phases. We just began processing the census unedited file, or the CUF, from which the apportionment counts are tabulated. 
After we finish the cuff, we conduct the final review and prepare the state population totals before delivering the apportionment data to the president. These state population counts determine how many seats each state gets in the U.S. House of Representatives. We plan to deliver these totals by April 30th, 2021. Knowing that the COVID-19 pandemic might pose data quality concerns for the 2020 census, our acting director chartered the 2020 Data Quality Executive Governance Group last April to ensure that we had the right focus and resources dedicated to detecting and addressing data quality issues. For the first time, the Census Bureau plans to release data quality metrics for the nation, states, District of Columbia, and Puerto Rico, along with the first results from the 2020 Census. These quality metrics will include information on self-response, non-response follow-up, as well as metrics on addresses that are resolved as occupied, vacant, or delete. With the release of these operational quality metrics, we give the public an unprecedented degree of transparency, providing metrics that typically are only published a year or more after the census. The focus on meeting our constitutional obligation has delayed some of the processing activities necessary to generate the redistricting counts. We expect to deliver the redistricting data to the states and the public by September 30th, 2021, along with a toolkit that gives users easy ways to access, sort, and handle the information. To help states get an earlier start on redistricting activities, we will also be providing the states with the same redistricting data but without the toolkit by mid-August. While it won't have the toolkit, the August release will contain the same data and will have gone through the same exacting quality reviews as the September release. Following our thorough and complete process provides the best assurance to the states that these data meet the quality standards they expect and require to underpin their important decisions. We will publish all data products and operational quality metrics on our website at census.gov.